Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making some dreamy dulce de leche cinnamon rolls. So let's get started. First off, we're gonna combine the dry ingredients in the bowl of our stand mixer, starting with three and a half cups, or 420 grams of all-purpose flour. These cinnamon rolls are impossibly soft and cloudy on the inside, and one of the main things you have to do is not add too much flour. So scale is gonna be your best friend here. I also wanna add half a cup or 100 grams of granulated sugar. The sugar sweetens it up, but it'll also soften your dough as well. For a bit of contrast, one teaspoon of salt. It's a good idea to use a nice sea salt for this. Now for the leavener, we're gonna use instant yeast today. This does not have to bloom in warm water, so in you go right into the dry ingredients. Whenever you're using yeast, make sure the recipe calls for either instant yeast or active dry. If a recipe calls for active dry yeast, you can't substitute instant yeast. It's not gonna work out as well. For some warmth, I'm adding half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a mere blessing or an eighth of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. And I like to grate mine. Our scale is done. Grab a whisk and just mix it up. Whenever you're making cinnamon rolls, you can feel free to add spices into the dough. And honestly, it's just gonna make it better. I love having that extra depth of flavor throughout the roll, not just in the filling. Nicely mixed, now let's get our wet ingredients together. Now, in a medium microwave safe bowl, I'm gonna add six tablespoons or 85 grams of unsalted butter, and this needs to get melted. One of the main things that like, I see when there's a bad cinnamon roll is the dough itself is just like a plain, kind of dense, dry, nonsense dough. The dough should be like impossibly rich, soft, fluffy, yield to the tongue, and like a vehicle for this amazing filling. And that happens because you add butter. The butter is so important, you're enriching the dough. And the only trade-off is the yeast has to work a little bit harder to do the rise, which means you have a longer rise time. But it is totally worth it. This goes into the microwave, 15 second increments, and just stir in between until it is all melty, but has not exploded. My butter is melty. I also microwaved my milk for 15 seconds. It's one half of a cup, 120 mils. Pour that right in. I also want half a cup of sour cream, and sour cream is like my secret ingredient in uh, cinnamon rolls because it does two things. It adds some tanginess, actually there's multiple things, tanginess, richness, and the acid in here prevents um, some of the gluten from like connecting to itself, and uh, it gives you like a cakier, texture. We're gonna whisk this in and microwave it one more time for 15 seconds, just so it's like nice and warm because the sour cream was cold. But you'll notice like, like it's a nice liquid. It's not like little granules of fat suspended in water. If you love making delicious things, but you haven't subbed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. There's two long form videos every week and more shorts. So there's always something delicious on the horizon. Now we're gonna add our warmed milk mixture into the flour mixture. To this, I'm also adding one egg. It'll give it a little bit of structure. So right now you could just pop this onto your mixer and give it a start. But whenever I have a dough like this, I like to give it a start by hand. I think it just makes it go much easier. Oh my gosh, the nutmeg and cinnamon here are coming out in full force. And really, if you had the time, you could make this by hand. You do not have to use a stand mixer. People made dough for thousands of years with no stand mixers and it works just fine. It just takes more time and effort. That's been given a start. And now I'm gonna grab my stand mixer and hook attachment and get to work. Before this gets started, I'm adding one tablespoon of vanilla for a little bit of extra depth of flavor. I'm gonna start this off on low. So we're letting this come together and then increasing to medium low. And right now the dough looks super shaggy. If I pull it apart, it breaks instantly. The consistency is different from place to place and it basically looks like a yucky mess. Once it's been mixed together and you form the gluten and like get that dough working, it'll look smoother. It'll be much more stretchy and because it's so rich, it's a tacky dough, meaning it's sticky, but it won't stick to your clean fingers. That's the test. This has to run on medium low for eight to 10 minutes. If you're doing it by hand, it's a little bit longer just because I think you're a little bit less efficient. You'll also have to reflower your hands because it will get messy. And by the way, I haven't even talked about the star ingredient in this. I've just been focusing on the dough. Dulce de leche is one of my favorite things. And if you watch this channel, you know I'm obsessed with sweetened condensed milk. 
And if you cook that sweetened condensed milk down for a while, the milk will like caramelize and you have a wonderful like milky caramel and it's so very delicious. It's similar to caramel, but it's not as sweet like in the best way possible. So here, when paired with this rich dough and the cinnamon sugar filling and that cream cheese icing, it is gonna be giving you so much extra flavor and it's, it'll be a speak delightful. This is already looking much smoother. I wanna show you, it's just been like one minute, but the dough is smoother now. It's come together, it's not shaggy anymore. But if I pull it, it just breaks. So it really has to mix for quite a bit longer. Let your mixer do the work. You can set a timer if you want. And in the meantime, get some dishes done, watch some funny videos. The world's your oyster. Much mixing later, and you can see the dough is much stretchier. Look at that. It smells really good too. And with my clean finger, I can tap on it. It feels sticky, but nothing is sticking to my finger. And normally, you'd pop this into an oiled bowl and let it rise, but to be honest, there's so much butter in here that it's not sticking to anything, so pop that off, give it a cover, let this rise in a warm place for about an hour or until it's doubled in size. If it needs more time on a cold day, just give it more time and it'll be fine. My dough's just about done rising, so we need to get our filling together. There are two parts, the wet part and the dry part. For the wet part, I want a quarter cup or 88 grams of amazing dulce de leche. Look at that color, it's beautiful. I also want a quarter cup or four tablespoons of butter, that's 57 grams. And the butter should be on the softer side of room temperature because you want it to mix really easily. And this is gonna be the delicious glue that holds the cinnamon sugar onto the filling. And if it's room temperature, you really shouldn't have a lumpy situation. Just mix it up until there's no streaks of butter or very few. Set that aside and now get another small bowl for your cinnamon sugar. For the cinnamon sugar, you have a choice. I'm calling for two tablespoons of brown sugar because the dulce de leche is pretty sweet. But if you wanna have extra gooey, like melty, amazing cinnamon rolls, you could add an extra tablespoon or two. I'm gonna do that. Adding like one and a half extra tablespoons. No, that's a lie. I added two extra tablespoons because they're super heaping. One tablespoon of ground cinnamon. Mix that up with a fork and I'm not using granulated sugar because I really want to get all the notes of caramel that I can. And brown sugar is great for that. And by the way, if you wanted to add more spices to this, you totally could. I might say a little bit of cardamom, a little bit of allspice, those are my go-to favorites, but cinnamon is tried and true and everyone's gonna like it. All right, all mixed up, my filling is done, and my dough has really puffed up. So let's roll this out and get these assembled. Lightly flour your surface. I'm gonna pay the price for not oiling this bowl, I think. Sometimes when you oil bowls, it's just too oily. It like doesn't make sense. I don't wanna just roll this out because that would like crush the dough. So I'm going to pat it and shape it and then roll it. And I wanna end up with a 12 by 18 inch rectangle. Just be gentle and stretch your dough out. And it's been resting the whole time, so it's not gonna pull back very quickly. And you don't really need to use a lot of flour on the countertop because this is so buttery and rich, it's not very sticky. 12 by 18, perfect. Now we can get to spreading all that delicious filling on top. Let's add this amazing buttery dulce de leche mixture on top. And because the dulce de leche is so soft, it spreads really easily. This looks and smells so good already, I cannot wait to eat this. Spread it out, but leave like half an inch free on one of the short sides. Now we're gonna sprinkle our cinnamon sugar mixture all over the top. And if you only used two tablespoons, just don't throw it all in one place. It'll be hard to spread. Do that, whatever that's called. A sprinkle, that's what it's called. <laughs> sprinkle the mixture on top. Oh dear. Just get those last little bald spots that you see, and then we'll be ready to roll. Oh my gosh, this is decadence incarnate. The final step is to roll and cut. So if you're using a pastry mat, like I am not today, it's gonna be really easy. You just kind of lift it up and it rolls itself. But on the countertop, give it a start. And then once that roll is started, it'll be really easy. The one thing is you have to kind of position your roll so it's convenient for you to cut. So carefully move it over and you can also shape it a bit. So 
I had a scroll shape where the inside was coming out too much. Just pop that back in and move the edge out. This is 16 inches exactly. You could have nine or 12 cinnamon rolls, it's up to you. I like to have nine really big thick ones. Before I give these guys a cut, grab a nine by nine inch baking dish and we're gonna butter it up. It really doesn't need that much butter. It's more of like just for form's sake and a safety policy. You don't want anything to stick. You wanna use some unwaxed dental floss and you're just going to cut and place and you should have a beautiful spiral here. Now we're just gonna place the cinnamon rolls into the pan and we want three rows of three. There is one more rise, so let them have some room and they will puff up. I'm gonna cover these loosely, place them back into a warm place, and they should rise for about 30 minutes or until they're doubled in size. In the meantime, preheat your oven to 350 so it's nice and hot when they're ready. If you wanna make these for a special morning treat, but you're not a morning person or you just don't have the time, make them and stop here. So the night before, make everything, and just before the second rise, cover them and pop them into the fridge. Then the next morning or evening, you can take them out of the fridge, let them come to room temperature, they'll finish their second rise, and then you just bake them off. So you can have the icing ready to go, the cinnamon rolls ready to go, and in the morning, you're just baking and icing. It's so easy. In the medium bowl, I'm gonna combine a lot of delicious things, starting with four ounces of softened cream cheese, I also want about two tablespoons of dulce de leche. Look how beautiful that is, it is stunning. I'm totally eyeballing this. A pinch of salt for contrast, two tablespoons of softened butter, and I'm gonna give this a mix before I add the rest just to get it started. That works together really quickly. Now I'm gonna add the powdered sugar and finish off with the liquids, the vanilla and the milk, because that determines the consistency. Some people like a really soft, runny icing, and some people want a thicker frosting. To sweeten things up, one cup of powdered sugar. Now I'm gonna mix that in and add some of the liquid. Teaspoon of vanilla. That looks really good. So just to show you the consistency right now, it's a really, really soft, beautiful icing, but it's fairly thick. Let's drizzle in some milk so it penetrates the cinnamon rolls and melts right in for ultimate gooiness. That's about a tablespoon, and already I think that's perfect. This is my ideal consistency for cinnamon roll icing, but if you want it to be extra thin, add the remaining milk in. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna cover this up so it doesn't dry out and it's ready to go on as soon as my cinnamon rolls come out of the oven. You might not be able to finish these all on the same day if you're by yourself, so you can store these in the refrigerator for up to a week. Just warm them up over low heat in the microwave before serving, or you can store them in the freezer for up to three months. It's gonna be best if they're uniced and then you ice them after they've defrosted. Hot out of the oven, and here's the deal. One third of this goes right on top once that's on, let them cool for five minutes, and then we're gonna add the rest. Once you've iced, they're ready to enjoy. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so good. That is gooey melt in your mouth. Amazingness, it is saturated with dulce de leche, cinnamon, brown sugar. It's like a buttery cloud that melts in your mouth. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my breakfast treat playlist.